Hi, this is James Cook of Analyzing Social Media at the University of Maine at Augusta. And this week we're going to be talking very briefly about how to use NodeXL, uh, available at nodexl.codeplex.com, in order to enter vertex information, edge lists for a social network. So you'll notice that this looks very much like an Excel spreadsheet, Microsoft Excel. That's because it is a plugin to Microsoft Excel. You'll also notice at the bottom there are a number of tabs, uh, edges, vertices, groups, group vertices. We'll talk about what all of these tabs mean as the semester goes on. Right now, what we want to focus on is the edges tab. So. Uh, as we click there, uh, moving on through the tabs, we're going to head back to Edges, and you'll notice two columns, Vertex 1 and Vertex 2. Uh, these are the two pairs in any edge. Uh, vertex is a synonym for node, and you'll head right to one of these cells, click on it, and you'll begin to enter names. It's very important that you uh, spell names correctly because Node Excel is going to actually pick up on different names and every time it sees a different spelling, it's going to assume that that is a different person. So I'm going to say here, it, for my example, Andrew and Bernice are connected, Bernice and Clem are connected, Clem and Dorothy are connected saying that they have a relationship. You're going to have more individuals than this. I'll type in a few more myself. Uh, but every time I do this, you'll notice that uh, uh, in Node Excel that I can uh, specify a directed or undirected network. Okay, So a directed network has an arrow. An undirected network has no arrow. For your example this week, we're going to work with an undirected network. I'm going to continue to say Dorothy is connected to Edna. Uh, Dorothy is also connected to Bernice. Uh, Edna is connected to Andrew. You already have this data from your analyzing the social uh, web work. Uh, Florence is connected to Edna, so on and so forth. Okay. George connected to Andrew. George connected to Clem. And who shall I have? Howard. We're going to connect Howard to Clem. Okay, I'm just putting this in as an edge list, which is also described in your Goldbeck text for the course. And finally, uh, let's use a Spanish name. Inez is going to be connected to Bernice. Now, how to do this is all listed in your Hansen text, analyzing social media networks with Node XL. Uh, Inez is connected to Edna. Great uh, insights from a connected world. So lots of examples in chapter four. What I just did though here is I hit refresh graph. And when I did that, I came out with a kind of twisted looking set of uh, nodes and ties. But You'll notice there was a pause there while the computer was working, and it also in the vertices list, it listed, uh, came up with an automatic list of all the vertices, all the nodes. Now, if I use Harold Corin Fast Multi Scale and then hit Refresh Graph, I'm going to have a spring embedded uh, visualization, which means that nodes that are far from one another are pushed from each other. Uh, if they're far from each other in network distance, if they're directly connected to each other, they're pulled together. Uh, and that creates a little bit more of an intuitive uh, look. What else can I do? I can add some labels. If I select the cells in the vertices, Andrew through Inez, and then I hit Control C for copy, I can paste them, Control V, over in the labels column. And then when I hit refresh, boom, I have names there. What else can I do? I can left click on any node and then hold that left click button down and drag it around 
to move any node. I can move Inez around then, and I can select a different node. I could select Andrew. Let's select Andrew and move Andrew up and around. This is great. It helps me move uh, certain uh, nodes around so that the network makes sense to me. What else can I do? I can increase the node size. I look up at the top and by hovering over size, I see I can select an optional vertex size between one and a thousand. I'll enter 30. Let's see what happens with 30. I'll enter that for each of the nodes. I could enter different sizes for different nodes. And now I have larger nodes, I, and they're perhaps more noticeable. Uh, what else can I do? I could select Andrew and Edna by left-clicking on the graph and then dragging over until I select both nodes. I let go, and now they're in red. They're selected. If I hit the lock, that holds those two vertices, those two nodes, in place. Then when I hit refresh, Andrew and Edna are always going to stay in the same place, while all the other nodes, the other vertices, move around. That's handy if I decide Andrew and Edna are really in the right place. If I decide I want to move them again, I can hit that key icon to unlock those vertices, and now they'll move again. Great. So that's a good place to start. There are some other things I can do, including graph metrics. Now, you just spent a whole week having to learn the ins and outs of graph metrices, like degree centrality. Oh, look, degree centrality, if, uh, vertex between this centrality, eigenvector centrality. You can calculate these by hitting the graph metrics button under the Node Excel tab on the top. Okay, now you can look. Uh, there's automatically generated text every time you select one of these options. It includes a Wikipedia article which describes the measure, uh, and, and it will give you a little bit more of a quote there. Great, but you can then go down to the bottom when you're ready, and you can click the Calculate Metrics button. And automatically, Node Excel will calculate these uh, quantities for you. Uh, they include graph density. How full is a network of ties? Well, we have a graph density of 0.361. That means, uh, not even roughly speaking, exactly speaking, that this network is 36.1% full of ties. Uh, there's about 64% more ties that could be fit in there. Uh, we know that the average geodesic distance is 1.604. That means, on average, the shortest path between two nodes is of length 1.6. The maximum shortest path between any two nodes is 3. Uh, between Howard, Clem, and Bernice. And on to Florence. Howard to Clem is 1. Clem to Bernice is 2. Bernice to Florence is 3. Howard to Clem is 1. Clem to George is 2. Uh, George to Andrew is 3. Uh, Howard, Clem, Dorothy, Edna. That's four nodes, but three intervening ties. Uh, maximum geodesic distance. Shortest path. The maximum shortest path is three. Lovely. Oh, now when I hit the vertices tab, look what appears. New columns, which include some network statistics. Here we have information about the degree. We know Bernice's degree is five. Clem's degree is four. Howard's degree is only one. I can go to the autofill tab now up at the top. And if I do that, I can use those network statistics to change the way my graph looks, to change how it's visualized, to use a fancy term. Uh, I could do that with, through edge statistics, vertex, ver vertices statistics, group statistics. We'll get to those later. Let's just look at vertices. I could change color, shape, size, opacity. That is how uh, transparent it is. But today, let's look at size. And I'll select degree as the determinant of how big a vertex is. I'll select degree, and then I'll click options over to the right, that arrow. And I'll look at options. So I want to start from the smallest number in the column to the largest number in the column, the column of, of degree. And I'll map it to vertex, vertex sizes between 1.5 and, oh, let's say 20. Then I'll click Autofill and look at that network over on the right, that network graph. All of a sudden, I've found 
Howard, who has the lowest degree, has the smallest. I know that uh, Florence, well, Florence over there, it's hard to see because her label's on top, but let's move that node. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, and Inez is a bit bigger than Howard because they have a degree size of two, as you can see over on the left-hand panel, which contains our statistics. Uh, Edna's a bit bigger, and Bernice, she's uh, got a really big node because she has a degree of five. Uh, the individual in this network who is most sociable. I hope this has been useful for you in your homework. Best of luck to you in your homework. Uh, consult your text for learning about social media networks uh, and your Hanson text for how to carry it out. Best of luck.